Hey guys, welcome to another brand spankingly new deep playthrough, this time of Assassin's Creed Unity. Um, I would hope that third time is a charm, that's I think a saying, because this is actually the third or maybe even the fourth time that I'm doing this first episode. For two times it crashed, I built a new PC and I was a bit over enthusiastic with the overclocking so the, the, the recording crashed and uh, last time like an hour ago the audio was out of sync with the video for some reason i do think what might be the reason could be the reason i hope uh, that it won't happen again because at that time the the screen just went black for like two seconds and i think during that time the recording stopped and the audio may have continued recording i'm not sure but as soon as i see like a blackout of one or two seconds like the screen refreshing in the background i'm not sure what the reason uh, or the, the cause was of that then i will for sure stop this episode as well because i think chances are big that the audio will be desynced then as well anyways um a game already six years um, old i did play it at release time um at that time i did not record any footage i never finished the campaign uh, i'm not sure why probably because uh, other games came in between um, but it was always at the back of my mind because the game made made an uh, uh, enormous impression on me uh, back uh, during release or after release because it's it just looks amazing this really still in 2020 looks like a next gen game the texture quality is amazing the amount of different textures the amount of different assets objects in the world little details little books little tools little pens and weapons and uh, cutlery and what have you not it is quite amazing what they uh, created in in this game world of paris um, I don't know that much about the story, uh, but I do think it's a gritty, realistic story. And um, yeah, it just really appeals to me. Uh, it just hit my mind, why not just boot up Assassin's Creed Unity? Uh, I, um, it has been like two months or something since I did uh, uh, any recordings. That is because I was waiting for one of the new uh, video cards, the 380 cards. I actually eventually went with a 390, had to go with a 390 because that was the only one available. It's of course a luxury problem, but um, what did I want to say? Oh, yeah, the, the reason was also I wanted to build a new PC for Watch Dogs Legion, but looking at modern current day games, they are all re really hipster, so to say. and at least the stories and and the, and the npcs and stuff if you look at at london in Watch Dogs legion it's more of like a, a hipster paradise more or less there are hardly any regular folks walking about in the, the game world and i do think that assassin's creed is way more old school it's like a, like a serious undertone um dramatic grounded story so to say and yeah, actually that appeals to me much more than um, Watch Dogs Legion does uh, nowadays. So I am going with this one. Other reason is that Watch Dogs Legion, I will do a playthrough on that game as well. Because it certainly has also a lot of good points. But the performance is atrocious. And it's actually pretty ironic that I am now booting up Assassin's Creed. Because Watch Dogs Legion simply is hardly playable uh, on the PC I built. It's really like a powerhouse, fully overclocked. Uh, I only get like 30-ish FPS in the London world, dipping down to 25 uh, with everything maxed without DLSS because DLSS is a little bit cheating, of course. But even with DLSS, the game crashes uh, randomly. So I am now uh, the, also one of the reasons I'm now doing Assassin's Creed. But the irony is that Assassin's Creed Unity, at during its release, got 
an, a m tremendous amount of flack uh, slung towards it because of its buggy release. There were like like graphical glitches and, and the performance was not that good. I never really experienced game breaking bugs as far as I remember. Um, the only thing I remember is that it was a pretty cool uh, or very cool game. And I think also from the playtesting I did a little bit just as preparation for this playthrough. I think I can say that Assassin's Creed Unity probably got an unreasonable amount of uh, criticism against it and it might even be the most underrated game ever because I will have to um, uh, confirm my uh, thoughts after the playthrough but I think it may be one of the best Assassin's Creed um, entries in the series of them all so uh, yeah th that is uh, yeah my thoughts now on it maybe it's a, a super bad story but I can hardly uh, uh, I hardly expect that uh, anyways a lot of talking from my side I quickly run you uh, through the new PC build um, just to talk it out of my system uh, that's uh, I've been tweaking it for like the last week two weeks stability testing overclocking it uh, it's a uh, MSI Unify Z490 motherboard, uh, the 10900K Intel CPU, uh, running 5.2 gigahertz on all cores, uh, a 390 Strix, uh, all uh, Rock Strix uh, GPU, running at I think 19. 100 uh, megahertz but if the temperatures are okay it boosts up to over 2000 megahertz um, the AIO the cooling is a fractal design s24 Prisma the case is a fractal design meshify C very small case I really had to bend some metal to get the GPU in because the 390 is like huge um, the PSU is a Corsair HX, HX 1000 watt and I have five industrial Noctua fans, two 140 millimeters intake and three 120 millimeters exhaust. Um, that is the powerhouse and even with that PC, oh and memory is um, 32 gigabytes, two times 16 uh, DDR4 team group running at 4300 megahertz cus latency 16 with all the sub timings uh, fully trimmed down and even with that powerhouse uh, watchdogs legion um, yeah just dips down to 25 <laughs> frames per second which is pretty weird because you should expect like 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 the, the, the brand new graphics cards to be able to max out a 2020 game but apparently that is not the case um, the playthrough will be a deep playthrough my little niche uh, meaning that I will go through it uh, the deep part is uh, uh, meaning that uh, it will be a broad approach doing collectibles uh, or hunting for collectibles doing the side missions reading up on the lore checking out the game world of course doing the uh, primary campaign uh, in this case also the DLC uh, is included so we'll be touching uh, uh, on that as well um, no HUD modern HUDs are super unimmersive in my book score counters flashy icons they take away all the immersiveness of the beautiful game world and uh, also any sense of accomplishment of figuring things out yourself mostly in modern games there's a big arrow on your screen that says go here and then once you get there there's the next arrow say go there so it is really like totally made foolproof and full of hand holding and i really dislike that so no huts um, I don't think there is a difficulty slider in this game, but otherwise it would have been max difficulty. Uh, max graphics, everything maxed out. Uh, uh, and the performance seems to be A-OK. -okay. And of course, I wasn't expecting anything else from a 60, uh, six years old game. Although I do s notice that it sometimes even dips below 60 FPS, but um, I can live with that. Uh, that about wraps it up. Deep playthrough, uh, broad approach, no HUD, max graphics, 
max difficulty, if there would have been a, uh, a slider, I don't think there is, uh, difficulty option. Um, new system, and I still think that my um, expectation that this is the most underrated game ever will hold true, but we will see. Let's boot it up and see you on the other side. The past is not lost. The past lives inside us. Encoded in the double helix are the experiences of our ancestors. After three decades of research, our engineers have forged the cutting edge of biotechnological interfaces. We have unlocked the lives of our forebears. We have opened a window into the past. This is Total Immersion Entertainment. With the press of a button, you will experience the most pivotal moments in history. All from the comfort of home. Welcome to Helix. Where the past is your playground. Of course, I've been here already three or four times with all the crashes and uh, out of sync audio, but everything is locked over here. These are like, um, yeah, the, the, the promos from that um, Abstergo Helix company that we just saw a infomercial from. Um, they provide like virtual experiences or something. And they, I think all relates to previous um, Assassin's Creed entries in the series this is the one we will be playing the tragedy of Jacques de Molieu. this one is I think relates to a classical game one of the earlier ones this one looks to be syndicates like a bit of a British guy this is a classical one with Ezio the Emperor's Shadow I think there was also one Assassin's Creed entry in China I think the China Chronicles or something I think this one relates to that this is one of the earlier games, the Ezio games looks like. This is the one in the uh, United States. I forgot the name. This is, I think, related to Black Flag, like the Pirates one with the ships and stuff. This one as well, Devils of the Caribbean. Then we have Hell in Hibernia. I don't really recognize that one. Maybe also Syndicate or the American one. Jess H. Funkies, I would say Syndicate as well. And the Bladed Cross, I actually have no idea. I'm just uh, making things up as I go. But anyways, all kinds of um, uh, yeah, memories and uh, yeah, virtual experiences offered by the Helix Corporation. I wonder whether this is just only part of the intro or whether this will also be a menu later in the campaign that you can access and that they will become unlocked and that we can play them. I doubt it actually. I think this is all part of the uh, intro. But anyways, let's go with the only one available, the tragedy of Jacques de Molay. Last of the heroic Knights Templar, Jacques de Molay was a man of principle, a towering intellect betrayed by those he trusted. In this episode of Fallen Heroes, experience Jacques de Molay's final tragic hours through the eyes of one of his closest friends and advisors. Here we go. Paris, France, October 13th. 1307. Who goes there? A friend of the temple. Floarak, the council's message was absolute. You're not welcome here. I must speak with the Grand Master. He's in session. They all are. Another day, perhaps. King Philip disagrees. Damn you, man.
Why you're not rotting in a cell at this moment, I cannot fathom. Betrayed! Draw your swords, men! Defend the temple! Not you, brother. I have a different task for you. Come with me. Alright, before... I come with him, is uh, one thing I need to do before we start, and that is uh, disable the hut. Because it's really weird in this game, there is no way, if you started a game, there's no way to start a new game, like overwriting your existing save or creating a new one. If you really want to uh, start all over, like I just did now with the intro movie and stuff, you actually have to physically delete the save files from the Ubisoft folder. There is simply no way to start more than one game. It's really weird. Another really weird, uh, I wouldn't call it a few, feature but um, uh, the sign decision is that there is no way to go from the in-game menu where we are now to the main menu you, the only option you have is quit to desktop <laughs> I, I mean I don't need to go to the main menu that often I actually mostly go to the desktop uh, from the uh, in-game menu but still it is really weird that it's not an option so you cannot start uh, an, a second uh, playthrough um, and you also cannot go to the main menu. Anyways, having deleted all my save, having had to delete all my saves, um, means that all the settings were reverted to default. So I am now quickly uh, reconfiguring them. Game options, English, blood on, companion app off, rift guides off progress silhouettes off not even sure what they are sound everything defaults just max out subtitles off also unimmersive subtitles just like huts hut everything will be hidden conflict friend widget minimap mission log player widget tutorials updates weapon indicator puppeteer high ground icons everything hidden except one i will en uh, enable the tutorials that is uh, just to get to maybe there are some relevant exotic uh, gameplay mechanics that uh, I can learn from it but that I will only keep it enabled like in the in the first part uh, the beginning part of the game then I will also hide it uh, I also did some preparation myself by watching videos on YouTube from Leo K and G Sirs G C E R S I can both highly recommend the, those guys they make terrific Assassin's Creed um, uh, videos uh, and also tutorials on the uh, the finer um, details of the uh, gameplay mechanics especially the the parkouring and the, the, the climbing and um, uh, stuff around the world uh, throughout the game world um, because they're really helpful because a lot of them or quite a lot of them uh, are actually not explained by the in-game uh, tutorial or the in-game uh, manual so and they are quite obscure so if you didn't watch their video you will not have the full breadth of possibilities so to say but even with those videos watched i will also keep these uh, in-game tutorials on for now for the rest all the hut is a goner controls it's just all default sensitivities and vibration is on playing it on the xbox 360 controller customized controls this is for uh, uh, mouse and keyboard inputs not relevant for now graphics everything maxed 4k 60 frames per second full screen default brightness graphics ultra high vsync off i enabled it in the nvidia control panel stress stretching off advanced graphics everything ultra environment textures shadows ambient occlusion hbo plus shadows and soft shadows that's the max uh, settings anti-aliasing four times you can go to eight times but i don't see the benefit when you're playing at uh, 4k so uh, yeah i will just keep it at four that's also the ultra presets bloom on um, and that is about it credits for the main game and the dead kings dlc we may watch all at the end but that's not for now 
and this is uh, restoring the defaults. That are the options. I will quickly run you through the other menu items. The e-store, that's for the DLC. Uh, a lot of DLC uh, that was previously paid became freely available during the course of the uh, game's uh, life. Uh, so actually, I only had to buy one um, uh, weapon uh, pack and for the rest it was all already unlocked. Uh, for instance, also the Dead Kings DLC, which is like a four or five hour uh, 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 yeah, DLC story content, was made available free of charge to all players as a kind of an apology from Ubisoft uh, for the buggy uh, launch of the game. Um, and more of like a compensation, so to say. And yeah, really nice of them, but uh, I, as far as I remember that whole uh, th there's for sure it was not an optimal release, but I think it was also way overblown the amount of flack that Ubisoft and the developers uh, received for their uh, release because it was not nearly as bad as people made it out to be, I think. Um, anyways, that's the e-store. I don't need to buy any more DLC. Everything is unlocked. The database, besides a really impressive, detailed and big game world, the game also has like a lot of content in its encyclopedia and case files. Encyclopedia describing the characters and the locations and uh, miscellaneous, I'm not really sure what that is. Will not be reading the, them now, but I will be reading them regularly. I've already been talking way too much uh, for my feeling. So, uh, but that is, uh, yeah, the, the, the lore, so to say, of the game. And you, here you have case files for murder, mystery, and Nostradamus enigma clues. So that are probably very nice um, side objectives. Murder mysteries, I really dig those. Uh, and the tutorials, I will probably be reading these either uh, the e-manual offline in my own time, or maybe during the game as well. But this, uh, I still have to go through this, but I will be doing it because, uh, yeah, as mentioned, there might be some obscure gameplay mechanics that will be uh, handy to know. Uh, that is the database. Then Uplay, which is uh, was at the time Uplay, it's now Ubisoft Connect. Not sure why it's over here in the menu. I won't be pressing it because probably we will get redirected to an external website or something. Screw that. Options we went through. Initiates was a kind of an online platform for all things Assassin's Creed, but I think it has been phased out in the meantime already. Uh, if you click on it, I did it during playtesting and you just get an error message. Then reload last checkpoint and restart the memory. That's like the chapter in which you are. Uh, we'll, we'll for sure not be doing that right now. And this is quit to desktop. And as mentioned, the quit to main menu button is simply non-existent. Um, if you look to the bottom left, it actually says resume is B. And then it says main menu. So probably the game says this is already the main menu. So, well, actually, if you start a new game, you are also in a menu. And I th to, in my interpretation, that should be the main menu. This should be the in-game menu. But apparently, yeah, the developers thought otherwise. Um, but yeah, so much, way too much babbling from my side. Apologies for that. Here we go. The lips moving faster than we expected. Mm -hmm. Another hand is at work here. The Pope? The assassins. Assassins? I thought the Mongol Khans broke their power decades ago. The assassins are far older than Masaya, my friend. Their anarchic delusions are virulent as the plague, and less easily eradicated. Right. We will not prevail this night. If you make haste, you may yet save our order. What must I do? Go to the... Take the sword and look. Hide them. They must not fall into the assassin's hands. Grandmaster, I will. Like I'm very good at the 
game, but this is all very easy. You only have to press one button and hold the bridge. It takes a Take a different way. During my previous run, I also, I will not do it now because I will need to make some progress, but I explored this area a bit and it's actually really big. You can get, uh, you can swim down the channel, and you can get behind the uh, castle. It's, yeah, it's just an amazing game, seriously. I'm not sure why I can already say it's my favorite Assassin's Creed, but it for sure is. The amount of art in the game <coughs> the realism the textures of the, the stones and everything is just spot on sometimes the, the buildings literally look photorealistic oh <laughs> somebody fell down from up above and we oh one second poor guy over there hello I cannot really zoom in on him. Alright, let's... Oh, shit! Oh, goddammit. That was the wrong way. Here we go. Oh, shit! <laughs> I actually trained um, on the mechanics and... Goddammit. Now I have to do it for real and I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. Right, concentrate. Here. There's somebody walking down over there to the left. And there's another one walking over here. So there are multiple assassins invading the castle. Let's get to them, but sorry, I'm a bit distracted. I'm just amazed by by this game world, seriously. The tower! They've breached the, the tower! They've taken the Alright. Let's get that bugger. But first, let's check another art piece. Alright, here we go. The music and the sound design is also amazing. It's just, yeah, sorry, I'm repeating myself. I'm a fanboy. I sound like a fanboy. I'm actually not that much of an Assassin's Creed aficionado. But this game somehow it hits all the right notes with me. We are not even in the city, which is way more impressive than this remote section. Right, hit me. Also the parkouring, that actually gives you a lot of options. It's, it's quite a layered uh, mechanic. And in modern games it's mostly much more dumbed down. Like tailored to the lowest common denominator, so to say. So that everybody can play it. 
Codex Pater Intellectus. And in this game it's still a bit of player agency, so to say. It's gritty. Pope Clement, hear me? Before this year is out, you will answer for your crimes before God Almighty! And you, King Philip, no punishment is too heinous for the great evil you have inflicted upon the temple! I curse you! Curse you to the 13th generation of your blood! You shall be cursed! So proved. Consumed in flames of hunger and wrath, thus came the age of true wisdom to a blistering close. The Knights Templar, once the proud shepherds of order, peace, and illumination, no more. Yeah, let's get a sniffer running. If Abstergo pings us, pull me out. Okay. I have a visual. Hey there. This is probably Hello. disorienting, so I'll be brief. I'm Bishop, not my real name, obviously, but that's as much as you'll get today. Please listen carefully. Abstergo is using you, hijacking your neurons to help them sift through genetic memory data. These guys don't have their fingers in countless corporations, governments, media outlets, and NGOs. But now, they want control over history itself. If that doesn't frighten you, it should. But we're here to stop them, and I need your help. Deacon, preload gene sequence, uh, AD16, B13, I87. Yep, spooling it up. Last week, we gained access to a bank of unsequenced memories in Abstergo's Helix servers. For now, we'd like you to experience a small sample. This should help you understand our struggle. And after that, you can decide for yourself what comes next. We'll be waiting. All right, all right. Versailles, December 27th, 1776. Is that the year of the French Revolution? Oh no. I think so. Let's make it a learning moment. Can't I go with you, Father? Looking it up. Courage, my boy. You wait just here. I will return when this hand reaches the top. Ah, it's actually That's the forever. independence. Not as long as all that. And when I get back, we'll see the fireworks. And Arno, no exploring, hmm? Yes, father. All right. I already thought like it may have been something else. The French Revolution was 1789. So 13 years later. <laughs> right. Again, look at the detail of the textures. His sleeve, the little uh, embroidery the on it. Come on. The resolution of the in-game artwork 
and the also the variety the amount of different paintings it's all incredible the expansiveness the, the, the feeling that you're indeed not only in a building but you can see outside just like in the city if you're outside you can look inside for uh, at a lot of um, buildings it really feels like a coherent whole so to say it's pretty amazing and also really charming starting out as a child i can hardly remember it it's been too long ago but that adults were like giants hello giants Guard, attrapez-les. You're gonna get such a thrashing. And I am repeating myself with one you more. Check out these wood textures. How realistic. The shine on them. It's not ray trace, but there's actually reflection in them. Pretty uh, accurate reflection from the window. Or that's maybe screen space reflections that could be. But it, it just for a six year old game all right that's the last time i've said it no probably not but it just amazes me how much this game now still feels like a next gen title while we are already a couple of generations ahead now in the hardware development world bet you can't steal one i bet i can Thank you very much. Put that back. Ooh. Break your pursuer's line of sight to create a last known position. Put that away now. All right, this is a nice mechanic. Also useful for stealth. Damn it. What the hell's going on? You create a last known position and you can lure you NPCs towards is, it. You can also use that to Please single out his royal highness, not the likes of you individuals from a group of npcs so to thin their crowd so to say what or to or to just move them about so that you can get to where you want to go with them out of the way let's do it again let's do that now so you he dare will, disobey an officer they always will go for your last known position and that provides opportunities for movement. Did you see their faces when we stole those apples? <laughs> I'm Arno. Elise. I'm here with my father. So am I. He has important business with the king. What should we do now? Shh. Listen. Don't worry, they'll never think to look for us in here. It was my fault. I'm the one who took the apple. Let's see where they're going. Keep up. Here, this, this just lo looks photorealistic. Keep up. That little statue over there, the little details. And also in such on such an enormous yeah. scale. It is... Um, Hurry up! I sincerely hope this unfortunate affair does not darken your opinion of our nation. Monsieur, if we judged nations by the character of their criminals, we should all be called barbarians. Elise. Father? Come here, girl. Now. Father?
fairly at cards, so you stoop to thieving, you bastard! Calm down, Victor. I've only come for my watch. It's my watch. I want it fairly. Well, in a just world, Victor, I would agree with you, but this is not a just world. This is France. You're a dead man! Oh, step lightly there. You'll hurt yourself. <laughs> Just had a nice chat with your brother. You go. Fetch the marshals. Hold on a minute. Diable. Diable. I say. Sorry. Pardon, madam. Gentlemen, please, we can come to an understanding. Please, excuse him, he's not housebroken. With you! He get it, blacksmith like you probably can't even read or watch. Come over here and say that! Uh, no. Get back here! See you later, dudes. Au voleur! Et parlez-vous de lui! I'm gonna smash your skull into place! Ah, yes. A wise man knows when to admit defeat, Victor. You do it right yes right we are in Versailles I think a little city or town to the south of Paris but I'm just curious um, if that is indeed the case one second Versailles where the hell is Paris yeah, yeah, uh, to the west, southwest a bit, now uh, west of Paris. Uh, anyways, we uh, can go and explore, but I already did that in playtesting quite a lot. Let's just also make some progress and, and look at the world while look at the game world while we are at it. <coughs> And this is also an example of the details in the world. There are many different um, uh, companies and shops and stuff in this world. Like this is a printer, but you also have weaponsmiths. You have like uh, grocery stores. You have like all kinds of um, different professions. And a lot of those NPCs have their own specific animations. And like like forging a sword or whatever the amount of animations is it's pretty uh, pretty good and also again the textures they just look lifelike in my book these wooden textures and also if i'm not mistaken there was a carriage Just the little smudges on the screen, uh, on the window. I don't know if you can see them in the YouTube video. But it's all those little weathered effects that make it a believable world. It is pretty cool. Hey, there's a collectible over there. All right, we can start the mission. Or we can get that collectible. By the way, did I... Put my timer on. I forgot the timer, goddammit. Right, let's get that collectible. Then we quickly do one little part of a mission. And then I am going to the next episode. Because 
I cannot make them too long because the file size will be pretty big already with 65 megabytes bit rates. All right, where was that thing? There it is. All right, I got it, right? Not sure what it is. But it looks like we got it. And where in God's name have you been? On the roof. Ha! Huh. Got you now, you little shit! Just a little misunderstanding. Nothing to... Your master's arboring a common criminal. In broad daylight, he broke into my home and stole my watch. Did he indeed? Well, I'm sure the Marshal C would be more than willing to sort this out. Sort what out, Olivier? Uh, a most serious accusation against your ward, sir. He robbed me. <laughs> of what, precisely? Wait for me in my library. Don't give me that look. Victor cheats when he plays Pharaoh. Everyone knows it. Arno? Who are you talking to? No one, monsieur. You'll be happy to learn I persuaded Olivier to leave off calling the Marshalsea. Again. Je vous remercie, monsieur. What is this? The sixth time? The seventh? Perhaps a new hobby might be better for your health. Well, I find playing cards affords many opportunities for fresh air and exercise. <laughs> we'll talk about this later. I have business in town and must collect Elise before I can attend to it. Elise is here? Only for the night. She returns to Paris first thing tomorrow. She'll need an escort. Won't she with you so preoccupied? One of you running amok is quite enough. Remain here and see if Olivier has any chores for you. Sure he does. What was that? Give my regards to Elise. All right, sequence one, memory one, memories of Versailles completed. Pass over under objects, don't get tackled. We passed them all, actually. In the previous crashed episodes, I somehow did not uh, complete. I only completed one of them, don't get tackled. Um, then we have few in the progress tracker. So this is the progress tracker. Total sync, 0%. Single player missions, mission 0%. The assassins have made contact. Synchronize yourself with the memories of Arno Dorian and figure out what they want from you. That's what we just did. Um, so this one is fully complete. Very nice. Um, cannot. Ah, we have uh, other stuff. Holy shit! Chests, bicorns, artifacts. Ah, here we can also see what we just collected. I think. Viewpoints. Uh, building upgrades. You can um, buy or upgrade buildings and create passive income. Viewpoints. Sync points. Cockades, also collectible. Artifacts. Chests. Then where do we go from there? And uh, then we go to the missions, I guess. So I can not really see what we just picked up because everything over here is still at zero. Pretty sure we picked something up. But whatever. Um, singer player missions. Ah, this is Dead Kings. Then we have miscellaneous, renovations, few points, sink points, cockades, artifacts, and chests. And then Paris stories I cannot interact with, cold missions neither. And then we are now in the to the left singer player missions. That's where we are. All right, good to know how that works. And then we, you have the other option is rate this memory, which is probably some kind of an online uh, aspect. And I will be skipping that. This is fully offline, old school. Um, and let's continue. Again, check out the detail. Yeah. 
they really did a lot of research, I think, to get this whole 18th century um, France going on. Because, of course, I'm a layman, but if you would ask me how it would look, I'm pretty sure it would look like something like this, 18th century France. four guys doing suspicious things. I think it's just being tailored or something. Or it is a tailor measure, taking measurements. <laughs> hey. I hear some kind of a sound. I think that's a chest. Let's get that chest and then do the mission. Where is that sound coming from? Now it's actually gone. I heard it over here. Ah, wait, isn't that over here? No. I hear a sound. One second. Then I will continue with the mission. Hello, Arnold, you can climb this, right? You can't. Ah, you can climb that. Alright, it's a bit weird. Maybe it's underground or something, but I know that collectible chests, they do make a sound when you're near them. I'm not sure whether it's this sound, but I am pretty sure. Hearing something now, something suspicious. But let's just leave it for now. What the hell is that dude doing over there? Uh, so the game indeed is a little bit buggy because he's probably supposed to be over here and stoking the fire instead of being in the fireplace but i can live with minor bugs like that all right here we go maybe the sound is just from this mission start maybe they also make a sound i don't know an urgent message has arrived for an absent Monsieur de la Serre. Track him down and deliver it post haste. Thrown out onto the street yet? Oh, you would love that, wouldn't you? It'd break my heart. Olivier, if I weren't here, who'd do all your work for you? The horses need brushing, boy. Get to it. Certainement, Monsieur. Pretty patronizing dudes. Also, these sound effects, they're all spot on. The carriage, the Sir, horse. Sir de wait! Nom de Dieu. Nom de Dieu, nom de Dieu. Some trouble, mon ami. A letter for Sir de la Serre. It's very important. Oh, calm yourself, Perrault. That letter won't reach Monsieur de la Serre any faster if you drop dead of exhaustion. Give it here. I'll catch you. You must receive it today. It's very... Very important. Yes, I heard you the first time. I'll see that he gets it. All right, here we go. Chase the carriage. Monsieur de la Serre! Stop! Make way, make way! Come on, Arno. Do your thing. Damn it, slow down! Right, it's over there. <laughs> Apparently, Walnut is a popular finish this season. Who is driving this coach, Pelos? Oh, you should. I know where it will end up. I've already played this. We'll come over here. Yes. 
C'est de la serre. Les excuses en carriage. What I need is a bird's eye view. I know what you're thinking, Arno. Great minds think alike. By the way, the big green indicator, this is only, I think, uh, mandatory active in the, this first mission. Once we get to Paris, I can deactivate it and then there will not be any HUD. Because even only one indicator is like distracting. Can you imagine having all those sub-menus, everything cluttering your screen? It's just crazy. You can hardly enjoy the world. States General, May 5th, 1789. Ah, this is there the year of the French Revolution. Ah, of course, in Versailles, that was like 1776. That was when Arno was a kid, and now it's 13 years later. Um, let's do the leap of faith. And that about wraps it up for this episode guys i hope you enjoyed sorry for all my long babblings but it has been two months since i recorded and babbled anything so um yeah uh, i it was fun to just talk some of that stuff like my new pc and stuff out of my system don't have too many people in real life who are interested in that who i can share it with so i will just do it with the internet um i hope you enjoyed i hope to see you in the next one i will continue immediately in the next one and hope to see you there for the meantime do not forget always do keep on gaming see you later